to me it was a necessity of a wanting to set like safeguard my family to make sure that they didn't get harmed but also helping create a world where if I ever have kids I can take them back to Iran and know that no matter who they are they'll be welcomed there with open arms. And when you look at the development sector there's sort of a very predominant paradigm, which is which is an aid paradigm, and you know the NDGs flow from this, the UN process flows from this. Most of the advocacy organizations in the space come from this idea that the way to solve global poverty is uh, throwing more money at it. The, the, the way we see it is that it's it's not poverty like it's some inevitable end state. Um, it's impoverishment, and it's a process, and it's ratified every day by our social, political, economic system. And until we address the root causes, the, the political drivers, um, tax, trade, climate, uh, we're, we're never actually going to get anywhere. Part of change is, is creating both a petition platform and a storytelling platform. And these, uh, these kind of stories that are almost always David versus Goliath, um, just by the, the, the nature of it and the individual starters, um, really takes off and it soars through the media, um, it spreads very easily through social networking. Um, and in almost every case, uh, decision makers don't want to be the bad guy in this incredible story. We did this campaign on bees where bees are dying off and we have to, you know, the scientists are blaming this one group of pesticides and the UK government was blocking a ban and we had 50, 60,000 messages sent to the UK Minister for Agriculture and he took out an op-ed saying, hey, this is cyber warfare, like Avaz is <laughs> declaring cyber warfare on us. And these were British citizens writing to him to say, we want you to support this ban. And so we responded and said, this is what democracy looks like.